Earlier this week I took a trip down to Atlanta, Georgia, both to visit my sister Becky and to attend Halley Expo 2023. I have a separate walk around video coming on Halley Expo, but I wanted to publish this quick chat I had with Dennis Banks, the chief pilot of MD Helicopters, on their MD 530F, this being my personal favourite helicopter of all times. The 500 range of helicopters has been around for 60 years now and started out as a Hughes OH-6 US Army observation helicopter used during the Vietnam War in conjunction with the AH-1 Cobra attack helicopter. Back then they had a four blade rotor system and just 250 horsepower but they were praised by their pilots for their responsiveness and crash survivability, attributes that still keep them popular 60 years later. Anyway, on with the interview with Dennis. Keep in mind that we had limited time, so this aircraft walk around is a little rushed at times. Yeah, the 530F, if you compare it to you know the through evolution, we started out with the D model, yep. and then we went up to the E model, which is basically a five-bladed, smaller engine aircraft. Which is still for sale, right? Still for sale, yeah. and yep. we're still producing that. Smaller blades, right? Right. About a foot less in rotor diameter, a little less on uh, the tail rotor for the E model, and then yep. the smaller engine. And the Physically, they look about the same. The two differences right. you'll notice are the extension here on the tail boom. Oh, this here? So there's an 8 inch extension here to help with the anti-torque because of the increased horsepower. Oh, okay. And then you see the scoop on the bottom of the engine cowling. Oh, so okay. if you're looking at an F model versus an E model, that's, the, that's the, really yeah. the only way you're going to tell the difference. If you don't mind me interrupting. So I've noticed some people put a four blade on their 500s and that's just a sound reduction. Right. So yeah. it, this ties back to uh, Vietnam days and they had what they called the quiet one back there. Right. It was a project. So in order to quiet that tail rotor down, they put two more paddles on there and then they slowed the rotation down. Yeah. Because with helicopters, what you find is the majority of the noise is generally off of the tail rotor. Right. There's still plenty of them flying. Uh, it's not an increase in performance, it's just a reduction in noise. Right. Again, because we, we slow it down. Is there, a, is there a downside to having the four blade? There is, because it's not quite as much tail rotor authority. Right. So uh, people kind of prefer the two. If you're right. looking for authority, if you're looking for noise, the four. I see, uh, I see. They, they, they're not as popular as before. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you think about it, over the last 15 years or so, the EMS world, Mm. has kind of overtaken most cities. Yeah. So people are more desensitized to noise than they used to be. I see. Because a lot of police departments would get the four-bladed tail rotor or use the NOTAR because yeah, of the yeah. noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're generally flying so lower than So do you still everybody. sell the NOTAR? We do. Yep. Uh, there hasn't been much of a demand for it lately, but right. uh, we still have several police departments that fly them. Uh, and use them, and, and primarily it's the noise issues. And I see we've got a glass cockpit these days. Yeah, it's so you'll, it's a you'll nice see upgrade, with the, right? the garment. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a nice upgrade. Uh, you know, granted, we, we're not an instrument bird, but if you were to do any instruments, it, it's a great layout for it. Yeah. Uh, you don't see it here, but when you're outside, it's got the synthetic vision. You know, oh, the right. latest yep. from Garmin, the, yeah. the 650s and the TXIs up there. And then we've got the glass uh, layout for the engine instruments. Yeah. And that's the primary uh, upgrade you've seen of late is uh, the glass cockpit. Yeah. Our E-model, we've got a new what's called the slimline, where it's a narrower uh, dash. And the, oh, okay. the, oh, so the displays are stacked. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the E-model. Yeah, e it's a lot less, it's like there's actual space on the right, right. down here. So it narrows down quite yeah, a bit yeah. with the slimline. Uh, you may see that in the future here, but that, that's the big upgrade of late. Yep. Uh, you know, I noticed on the old D models that this was much higher as well, wasn't it? The seat was higher. Yeah, a yep. little higher, and yep. then uh, you know, this, we call that the 78.5 panel, but everything mounts to that. Yep. Uh, you this see is a lot where of the, the strength is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's it. a lot of people kind of refer to it as the roll bar, if you will. Okay, right. You know, because it comes up directly attaches to the transmission support mount and then comes down the back side, so it almost works like a roll bar. Right. You know, nobody wants to crash. No. If you're going to crash, you want to be safe. everybody will tell you this is the aircraft to do it in. Right. You know, because it has a long lineage from Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. And oddly enough, the airframe itself hasn't changed much over all those years, really? other than yeah. adding more blades, more horsepower. Yeah. The same structure itself is the same that it's always been. Yeah. That's where we need to get you out to the uh, factory at some point, so we yeah. can show you that build process, if yeah. you will, where all the pieces go together. I guess the downside, the only real downside, is the is the rather cramped rear. Right, but it, you know, it's sort of big enough, isn't it? Depending on the mission, and that's yeah. where, you know, we don't compete with with the Bell and the Airbus for yeah. smaller aircraft. We'll never have the extra room in here like they've got. Yeah. But what we have is for very good, you know, mission sets like uh, utility. Utility operators love it. 
Right. There's no hydraulics, operational costs, everything. You won't find an aircraft that's going to be lower on operational costs. Oh, really? And because of that, it's highly desirable. It's also very maneuverable, so utility operators love it. It's got a small footprint compared to the others. Um, and the police departments like it a lot right. uh, because of the patrol work, things like that. So speaking of not hydraulic, no hydraulics. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've noticed that um, autopilots are starting to creep in even to the light aircraft models. I guess without hydraulics, you're not going to see an autopilot in, in, in a they're, 500? They're looking at that, but the problem is, again, without hydraulics, yeah. where do you tie that in? Sure. Yeah, right. There's some systems that use some elect electronic servos and stuff like that, but there again, you're, you're getting expensive, and what are you trying to get out of it? Sure, sure. So yeah. it hasn't really so been... No, no hydraulics is part of the cost savings as right, well, isn't it? Right, yeah. yeah. And, and there's no... It, it's all direct connection, isn't it? There's no it cables. It's all, no, it, yeah. it's all direct. You know, all the linkages come through and up the broom closet, we call it here, right to the rotor system. All right. What a beautiful aircraft. But again, it hasn't changed much. The only change you really saw between the D model and the E model was the pointy nose. The pointy nose, and yes. And that really started as aesthetics. You right. know, but after that, was like with the glass cockpit, you can see where we start mounting instrumentation yeah. back there, boxes and stuff for the avionics. But and, it and was is mainly the tall aesthetic. landing gear now standard as well? Pretty much, yeah. even though, even though I, I haven't seen one come out of the factory and as long as I can remember with what would be the standard was the, the short gear. Right. But everybody prefers the, the taller gear. Sure. You know, you get the step and uh, you get the clearance. So for utility work, police work, you don't have to worry about uh, you know things like the sensors you see on the other bird there and stuff hitting the ground. Right, right. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. Like on our military versions, we'll mount a sensor under the nose. Yeah. Which, so are you still selling to the military? We are. The, the little we bird? Yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, I think you... Probably today or tomorrow, you'll probably see an announcement come out about oh, it. Oh, wow. But uh, we, we got, call it the Cayuse Warrior. Oh, yep. uh, it's basically the same airframe. We use a little more of the horsepower, Yep. but uh, it's, it's basically the same airframe. Uh, more horsepower than the F or more horsepower more, than More the horsepower e? than this, because oh. even on this, uh, we're not using all of that 650. Oh, OK. You know, so yep. uh, it, it's got plenty of excess power. Can you talk a little bit about the blade system? I know, I know this is not an aircraft for aerobatics, but there well, was a time when, when there were you know, people it, it, flipping well, them, weren't there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are doing things they shouldn't be doing. Right. <laughs> However, the, a lot of aircraft will use a semi-rigid underslung system. Yeah. You know, so it teeters, you know, your Robinsons, the yeah, old Bells, yeah. things like that. So with this, what we do is the transmission mounts directly to the airframe. So the transmission itself has no load. Then the drive shaft goes up through the, the mass there and drives the rotor system. Right. So that's Very why simple. in this aircraft you'll see a smaller transmission than you would see in a lot of other aircraft where the transmission has taken up a lot of the flight loads. So you get a direct response. And that's what uh, utility world and everybody likes about it because right. it's, it, it's Instant. basically the Ferrari of, right. uh, of, of the flight industry. You don't have any delay. Like you get into some of the older Hueys, things like that. Uh, you, you've always got just a little bit of lag in that, where yeah. in here it's instantaneous. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Um, oddly enough, if you were to look at an Apache, you'd see pretty much the same design oh, really? with the really? strap packs and oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it started off with this, you know, uh, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas all, had all those aircraft under their umbrella. Right. And then uh, they broke off the commercial line from the military line. But that's where a lot of that technology just fed right into the, uh, the Apache with the strap packs and things like that. Yeah. So the adva advantage of the E is lower fuel consumption, I'd say. Lower fuel yeah. consumption, you know, depending on what you're doing with the mission. You know, this was really started off for the high, hot, heavy type environment. Yeah. Uh, and, and even your E models, we got a couple versions of that with different engines based on altitude you're going to be operating at. Right. You know, the C-20B engines, more your lower altitudes. C-20R engine was built for a little higher altitude. Uh, but it's the same basic airframe with, with the exception of what we pointed out. Uh, oh, and obviously, right. anytime you get a smaller engine, you're going to have better fuel burns. Sure. Well, that's very interesting. Dennis, thank you so much for your time today. No I really appreciate it. All right. Yeah.